Hey everyone, it's Anthony from Pretty Printy here. In today's video, I'll be talking about how you can use Ajax to update elements on a page without actually refreshing the page. So to demonstrate this, I have this list of members that I made up, and I think there are about a hundred of them. And let's say I updated Connor here and changed the email address. I want this to work in such a way to where when I update, the information for Connor will update uh, in this little section here from the database, but the entire page won't refresh. That way I can keep my place on the page and continue updating other members if I choose to do so. So the back end part of this video will have Flask code, but it should be pretty simple. So I'm gonna focus mostly on the Ajax, except for a part where I have to use Flask to process the, the form data, but you'll see that in a few minutes. So what I have so far is I have a, a model for the database, which is pretty simple. I have an ID, name, email, and random column in the database. And then I have a, a route for the index, which simply gets all the members from the database and sends them to a template to be rendered. And that's exactly what we saw here. Um, really, there are only three things that I'm interested in for each member, uh, their name, their email, and their member number. The member number is a random number. It's the random column. The reason why I'm using that is because it would be easier to demonstrate how things are being updated in place because the member number is generated completely on the back end. It's not something that I can update here on the front end. So like I said, it would make more sense once you see it in action. And then I have this uh, template file that I don't have to modify. I just put in some placeholders for uh, the data from the list that I generated of members. And then I have some IDs and classes so I can reference it in jQuery. And then I have an empty app.js file, which will do all the work. So before I get to the JavaScript part, I just wanna write a quick function to accept updates from the front end. So let me write that quickly. It's going to be on the update route, update. And it will take in a post request. So this isn't too important. It's just necessary to process the form. But the focus in this video is on the jQuery. So what I'm doing is I'm going to query for a member who is passed into the form. So uh, request form an ID. Since ID is unique, I should get one result and I want the first of that one result. And then I'm going to update the name. Just request form name. I'm going to update the email address to the email address passed in the form. And I'm going to generate a random number. So rand int between one and 10,000. I'm going to commit this to the database. And I'm going to return a JSON object. So JSONify, I need to include that up here. Just sonify. And for now, let's just make it results success. But I'll change that in a moment. So now that I have that, I can work on the JavaScript code. So what I want to do in this is basically whenever they hit one of the update buttons, it will update the information for that section alone. So like if I wanted to update member 4003, Joseph, I would change something here and then hit update. So to handle that, the first thing I wanna do is put a click event on all the update buttons. So I have this class here called update button. So I'll be adding the click event there. So dot update button. And let's do on click. I want to do something. And let's close out the function there. So on click of the buttons, I want to do something. And the first thing I want to do is I want to get the member ID for that particular member that I clicked update for. So I'll create a variable here called member ID. And let's do var. Probably should do let, but let's just assume this is older JavaScript. All right, so member ID is going to be this. And then there's an attribute on there called member ID. So we see here on the update button, we have this member ID attribute and it includes the member ID from the database. So that's the one I'm getting. 
And then what I want to get is I want to get the name and the email for this particular member. So using that member ID, I can find um, a name input and an email input that is concatenated with the ID. So there are a bunch of different ways you can do this to reference the, the field for the particular member you're trying to update. I just did it in a really straightforward way of concatenating the, the name input and the member ID and likewise for the email input and the um, member ID. So let's see, var name is going to be name input. So this one's an action ID. So member ID. And then I'll get the value from that. And the email will be similar. So I want email input plus member ID. And I'll get the value of it. So now what I want to do is I want to send this form to my backend, to my update route. So to do this, I'll say um, request is going to be an Ajax call. The URL in this case will be update. Type is going to be a post. And finally, the data that I'm interested in, I want to send over the name. I want to send over the email. And I want to send over the ID. So pretty simple, right? And then also when I do this, just to make it clear which section I'm updating, I'm going to do a little fade in so you can see what's going on. So I have this member section ID and it's similar, it's concatenated with the member ID. And I'm gonna fade out for a second and then fade back in. And this is just to make it clear which section is being updated. Okay, so when I do this, um, it's not gonna update on the front end, but it will update on the back end because I'm posting the data to this update route, it's updating information here and committing it into the database. So as an example, let me refresh this. And let's say I update the first one. So you see the member number is 610 and the name is Anthony. Let's change the name to David. And instead of Anthony at prettyprinted.com, I'll do David at prettyprinted.com. I hit update and you see it fade in and come back in but it doesn't update the member number and the member number is generated on the back end. But if I refresh the page and regenerate the list, I see that it didn't update. So let's see what's going on. That should have worked. So I'll do this request again and let's just send that one. And I got a 500 error. So let's see what the error is. Internal server, server error. And global name request is not defined. So this is a pretty easy thing to fix. I just forgot to include one thing up here. So let's try that again. Let's try updating. I got a 200, so that means success. So now when I refresh, I now see the member number is 3120. So small mistake, but you can see how a small mistake can ruin everything. So let me change this to David again. And then David at pretty print it, and I'll hit update. So we see that the member number doesn't update the name and email are right because I just typed them in. But if I refresh the page, we see that the member number changes. So 1389 is the new member number. If I hit update again and then refresh, 969 is the member number. So this number is what I want to get from the database, but I don't want to have to refresh the page to get it. Because say if I update someone all the way down here, uh, let's say Marshall, I update Marshall to Sarah, hit update. It updates, but the only way I can see the updated member number is by scrolling all the way down again. And let's see, where's Sarah? Let's see, even I'm having trouble finding Sarah. Okay, there we go. So Sarah has been updated and her member number is like, oh no, that's a different Sarah. This is the Sarah, right beneath Xantha. So, as we can see, I had to scroll and find Sarah again if I updated some inf information. In this case, it's pretty simple because there's not much to know. But imagine if you had a lot more information that you wanted to update, you wouldn't want to scroll to that section again. So the way you handle this is by sending the updated data back to 
the front end. So you do this through this JSON object. So in our case, we're going to do it right after uh, the database is committed. So uh, instead of seeing result success, I'll add something in addition to that. So I'll say, uh, let's say the member number. So member underscore num. And I'm going to pass this member dot random. So I'll copy and paste that. So this can either be from a query. So let's say I wanted to query the database again. I mean, I don't need to do this, but I could. Query the database again, which is exactly the same as the one up here. And that way I get the latest random number. Let's imagine something else went on between here or you were querying a different table that was related to it. Uh, you can run the query again and then pass the value back to random. But since this query is identical, I'll simply take it out. And this member.random is what I want to update on the front end. So I'll pass that back. And in my app.js file, what I want to do is once the request is done, so I'll do request done. I am going to simply update that member number. So I have this ID member number and it's concatenated with the member ID. So I'll do member number plus, and there should be a hash in front of that, member number plus member ID. And let's see what type of field it is. It is a span. So instead of value, I want to use text. So the text for this will be uh, from the data. So in my done function, I need to put uh, a data parameter. This is the JSON object that gets passed back to the front end. And I'm just simply looking for data dot, what did I call it? Data dot member num. So member underscore num. So now when I do this, it will update the member number with the member number from the back end that is generated completely on the back end. So let me move the fade in, fade out right above this so we can see the change. And then I'll refresh this and I'll run an example on one. So I'll change Yin to be, let's say Amber, and then I'll update. And the member number right now is 9869. I hit update and we see it changed to 9358. And the fade in was so slow that we saw the member number update before the fade in happened, but that's not really too important. So I'll go to another one. I'll change Tanner to Zach. I'll hit update. And we see the member changes to 4395. And as you can see, I don't have to scroll anywhere. I'll change Connor to, let's say, Larry. The member number is 3479. I hit update, and it changes to 5967. So that, that member number is completely generated on the back end from the random int here. So I don't know this member number until after I perform the request and get the response back. So that's basically the pattern that you can use to have things update in place in jQuery is basically knowing what elements you're targeting. And then um, in the done section of your request, you simply update everything that you want to update. And you don't have to refresh the page because you're only refreshing the particular element that you want. So in this video, I covered how to do it with JSON objects. I'll create another video after this showing you how to do it by updating all the HTML um, directly. So instead of you having to target the elements yourself, the back end will generate new HTML for that section alone, and then you can insert that HTML into the page using jQuery. So that will be the next video. So if you have any questions on this video, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get to it. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you next time.